When it comes to protecting civil liberties and human rights, you cannot be too active and too determined, no matter what the matters are. Of course prisoners should have a right to vote. It's absurd that they should be denied that. that. Absolutely right. I believe in that. They are taking their punishment. Nobody said that they can take away their right to vote. Next it will be you can't read a newspaper or a book or have writing materials, anything like that, and you know where that will It's end. so interesting you say that. I want to test you. Let me test you with another one, because there was this, cake, uh, this argument about a gay cake in Northern Ireland. Did oh, you yes, follow I, I followed that, yes. Who has yes. the right there? The couple who say, we want you to put yes to gay marriage on the cake, or the people who have to make, bake the cake who say, we yeah. don't want to put that on the yeah. cake. Because yeah. human rights doesn't, in the way, in the end, answer that, does it? You could say, well, I, either side has the right. You can't yeah, you, you've actually picked, I think, a deliciously um, uh, difficult subject, because finally I found myself on the side of the bakers. Did you? On that one, it the bakers? Was, yeah. Yes. It was not because this was a gay couple that they objected. It was not because that it, they were going to be celebrating some kind of um, uh, marriage or a, a, a agreement between them. It was the actual words on the cake that they objected to. And because they found them offensive. And I would support their rights to say, no, this is personally offensive to my beliefs. I will not do it. But I feel bad for them that it cost them 600 quid or whatever. Yeah. Let me ask you this, because I think it's very interesting that this party tonight here, celebrating 10 years of a building, basically, yes. <laughs> it's, yeah. nothing, it's not the biggest excuse for a party, but it's an excuse for a party, is attracting a lot of celebrities, yourself and plenty of others are coming tonight. It does seem like it's, been a, it's a cause that does attract celebrity support, more than some others. Is that just my perception or is that... And I'm just wondering why actors seem to be drawn to this, this cause of all. I think it's something to do with what we do. I think anybody who's in the arts and is lucky enough to work regularly, whether it's music or painting or poetry or writing or acting, feels very, very lucky, very privileged because, speaking for myself, and I have a feeling it reflects a lot of other people as well, I, and you mustn't tell my employers this, but I would do this job anyway for nothing because it's a job that I love, that defines who I am. And, and we are at liberty to do with our work whatever we want to do. It's a very dodgy situation these days, this thing of being an activist or being a patron or being the public face of a cause of some kind. And it really makes me angry because few people, maybe there are one or two, are, are not doing this for themselves. People are giving huge amounts of time, which is sometimes to artists more important than money, in order to support campaigns all around the world. And, and yet, I'm sorry, this is turning into a media bashing session. The media loves to illustrate, oh, they've got so much money and they live in an estate in the Cotswolds and, you know, they're doing this. It's just, it's just a piece of self-promotion and nothing else. There was a program last night about Winston Churchill, which was great. And um, he, there was, I was not a fan of Winston Churchill because I, my father wasn't a fan. And, and, and the cheering in our house in 1945 when he lost the election, I mean, you could still hear it today if you went to our front door. Um, but he said one wonderful thing. Uh, he said the greatest virtue is courage because it makes all the other virtues possible. A lot of the celebrities that we've been talking about, especially because of the attitudes of the media, are showing a certain amount of courage by doing this. You're a Labour supporter. Who are you supporting for Labour leadership? By the leadership? I am not drawn to any of the candidates presently. Um, I'll tell you exactly what I think should have happened. Go on. I think Ed should still be there. I think if if he did some terrific things and he made some mistakes. But I think the biggest mistake he made was resigning and walking out on the party. Now, you did famously come from a working class background in Dewsbury, didn't you? Mm -hmm. And you've made it. Yeah. Do you think you could do that now if you were... No, it would be very much more difficult. 
it, it wouldn't have been a case of could I get a place in a college, because I only applied to one and I got a place, place there. But it was the financing of it that made all the difference. I went to my local education authority, the West Riding, and asked them for a grant. And they gave me a county major scholarship to study acting. Um, it simply wouldn't happen today. And so, yes, if you've got private means, it's going to make this process so much easier. And although I think there was a certain amount of hysteria about it, poor Benedict, you know, I just felt so bad for them. All of a sudden, they're being held up as examples of something that was wrong with British theatre when Eddie Redmayne and Benedict Cumberbatch are two of the things that are right with British show business. Um, you've got a new TV series that's starting in the US, Blunt Talking. Your character, an English-British news presenter, going over there to make a talk show in the States. Mm -hmm. Uh, with Seth MacFarlane. Quite a few, this, because you don't do a lot of TV. It's not like you're a TV person. You're a stage actor. You've done movies. You've done Star Trek, obviously. Some are saying this is a golden age for television. Maybe it is the yeah, HBOs, the Netflix, the... Yeah. I hear constantly in Los Angeles, people are saying, you, you want to see real quality work? You want to see real quality movies, series, half-hour comedy shows? You put on the TV. You don't go and find out what's showing at the local cinema. It's, yeah, it's about a British journalist, um, not based on Piers Morgan. I hasten to add, even though he yelled out to me in a <laughs> restaurant, you're being me on television, he yelled at one point. Uh, well, we, we had breakfast the next morning, and I reassured him that absolutely not. I wouldn't endeavor to be him, though he did agree to appear on the show. About time they remade Star Trek Next Generation, isn't it? Who, who would play Captain Picard if, I mean, obviously, they remade it? Well, I've, I've already got James McAvoy playing me in the new X-Men series. And in fact, I'm not sure he'd want to be bald for that length of time, though. Patrick Stewart, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.